you know, I, I was in a hurry this morning. Like I said at the beginning of the show, I mentioned that I woke up uh, like at the last, I woke up late, I woke up really early 5 a.m. Uh, thinking I was gonna get out of bed because I could like ping my eyes were just open, I was awake. And then um, uh, next thing I knew it was 11.30 and I'd slept in like really late, like a bum, <laughs> which I, I think that kind of put me in a little bit of a mood because I feel like a complete loser if I sleep that late. Um, even though I tell myself, you know, you got up at 4 a.m. for a very, very long time. So if, if you sleep in every once in a while, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I have to remind myself every once in a while about that. But yeah, doing it on a Monday is not the best idea when you got a lot of stuff to do. I owe, in fact, I saw Allie in the chat. Uh, I, owe, I owe Allie some paperwork and stuff too. So um, yeah, I felt bad. I was behind today. I was planning on doing that stuff when I, you know, I was going to get up at like 7.38, do some normal work and stuff before I could go to the movie. And then um, I woke up late. I also knew that the movie's probably going to be very long, so I wasn't going to have as much time to do prep and stuff either. And sure enough, this movie, and I know that's what everybody's criticism is of a Christopher Nolan movie, or right? really almost any movie that comes out nowadays, that's everybody's first criticism is, it's too long. And I normally am all for the too long movies. This movie, too long. <laughs> this is a long movie, guys. And I'm going to tell you, I don't think I've ever had a movie uh, make me mad. I just, I don't know what it was, something about it, like halfway through the movie, I just got kind of mad. And I can't really put my finger, excuse me, my nose is around my allergies is going crazy today. I can't really put my finger on what about it necessarily made me mad. Other than the fact that it wasn't what I wanted, I think. I, I think I'm just waiting for another Inception. And I'm just never going to get that. I'm just waiting for a Christopher Nolan movie where it's like filled with a really cool story and a bunch of action. And I know I went to go see a biopic. <clears throat> but for some reason, because his name was attached to it, I just thought to myself I was going to be seeing some sort of very intense kind of uh, film. Which it was intense, but just in different ways. It was very... Um, I'm going to try to do this without spoilers. So... Um, I'll do my best. I don't think I, I mean, it is a biopic, so it's based on history, so there's not too much, you know, I would give away, I suppose. Uh, those of you, I guess, who don't know, I saw there's some people in the chat who didn't know who Oppenheimer uh, is or was. I don't even know if he's still alive. I don't, he's got to be dead by now, right? Uh, yeah, he's got to be dead. Uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer, uh, he was, yeah, he's long dead. He is the guy who came up with uh, the science behind the, uh, atomic bomb, which was, I think, I think nuclear fission, I believe, is what he was, what he got, what he came up with, I think. I'm not a scientist, don't claim to be, never going to be one. Um, but uh, anyway, harness the power of the atom to, maybe, to make the, create, the strongest weapon at that time that humanity had known, uh, created it in an effort to end World War II. Uh, the Hitler had already been killed, but the Japanese were still pressing on and were refusing to give up, uh, well, according to this movie, according to history, that the, the Japanese were refusing to give up, and they wouldn't give up until we, uh, well, they just weren't going to ever give up until we had some sort of full-scale invasion of Japan, and I don't think we were interested in doing that because it would have been a huge, massive loss of American lives and, uh, you know, uh, allied lives, and so they weren't willing to do that. Um, so right around the time all that you know, came to a head is right when Oppenheimer came up with the idea for uh, the atomic bomb. And then the race began between the United States and the Nazis, or not the Nazis, but, um, well, I guess I jumped ahead. He did kind of start, he did start working on this before the Nazis died, or excuse me, before Hitler died. So they were trying to beat the Nazis initially. I did, I guess I kind of jumped over that. But then they got to a point where they, you know, Hitler died, we were beating the Nazis, and it was really just us against Japan, and we needed a way to end the war. So he came up with this bomb, and the movie was about him, well, obviously about him creating the bomb, but I would argue that the movie was less about that and really truly about him. It was a biopic about him. Um... It wasn't like picking up in his childhood and stuff like that. So that was kind of nice in that sense. It wasn't one of those biopics where you got to watch the whole childhood growth and the way his daddy treated him and his mommy and all that crap. So that, that was kind of nice. I will say that. Um, but the, um, 
uh, it was, if you don't know anything about Oppenheimer or any of the things that happened post atomic bomb drop, I would recommend maybe learning a little bit about that before you go into this movie. That's the really tiny spoiler I would give, I guess, but it's really actually probably will help you in the long run because there was, I like to consider myself fairly, and while I'm not a scientist, I do know my history pretty well. And I have to say, I didn't really know a lot of this part of history uh, with um, the McCarthyism and kind of the everything that was going on. Uh, well, essentially, yeah, the, I mean, I don't want to give the movie away, but I think everybody knew this. I think they've talked about it in the news is this that his connection with communism. And essentially, that's a, little, a lot of the movie rotated around, which. I know they needed some sort of base to, I know the movie was uh, based off of a book and uh, this, uh, there was basically this guy who had a personal vendetta against Oppenheimer and they basically wrote this whole movie around this and kind of plopped the actual making of the bomb in the middle of it. Now I went into this expecting to see a lot more like of the technology involved I think of making the bomb. And they, while they did go into a little bit of it, there wasn't as much of that as I wanted. And it was a lot more of the, you know, communist stuff. Uh, so that was a little boring. Not boring, just not what I was looking for. Um, so maybe that's why it made me mad. Um, I also am going to tell you, Christopher Nolan needs to use CGI. I know he does say he is anti-CGI, uh, but he really needs to utilize CGI especially in the world we're living in where you're paying that much for movies. Um, if you're going to show an atomic bomb, show an atomic bomb. I mean, it was, uh, I don't know what I showed, if it was a, if it was clips, if it wasn't, CG, I don't know. I just felt like it didn't do justice to what uh, the bomb is supposed to do. And call me morbid, call me creepy, but I think part of the point of that movie, obviously, is to talk about how terrible uh, atomic bombs are and then lit, uh, eventually hydrogen uh, nuclear bombs so um I, I totally lost my train of thought um but oh the whole point of the movie was to try to you know downplay uh nuclear bombs and nuclear threat and all that stuff um so maybe that's part of what was making me mad too because it was the middle of it was a little bit um it's a little bit slow. The bomb wasn't uh, the atomic bomb that I was looking for. And, oh, I know my point. What I was saying there is uh, they didn't show any aftermath of what, and I guess that's kind of a spoiler. Sorry if I'm, if that, but there's no, the, if the point is to show you the damage in nuclear weapons do to people and or places, show it. Um, Instead, it was more about him and the damage done to him and his reputation. And I found that to be a little bit like, she's stupid. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess, the, I mean, the, really the movie's about, it's about, while it's, it, that movie is 100% about Oppenheimer. It is not about the bomb. It is not about uh, the, the politics around the bomb, they're sort of the maybe, but more really just centralized around him alone. So, um, but goddamn, Christopher Nolan does do a really fantastic job with creating a cinematic experience. The way he tells a story and the way he goes back and forth in time. Uh, I do like that kind of stuff. So you're going to get your Christopher Nolan. If you like Christopher Nolan, you're going to get your Christopher Nolan experience there for sure. Oh, shoot, and I just lowered the chat there, guys. So if you guys have been talking this whole time, I apologize. Uh, if you've sent me anything or sent anything, I apologize. Um, but, yes, uh, um, three-hour movie uh, for sure. It was a... Um, I hate saying it was too long because to tell the story in the way he told it, it was going to take every bit of three hours for sure. Um, but I'm not going to tell people not to go see it by any means, but I'm going to tell you right now, and I hate saying this because I love the big screen and movies on the big screen, but this is absolutely a movie you don't need to see in the theater at all. You can see this stream at home, uh, you, you know, unless you're just a really big history buff and really in particular certain people in history like Oppenheimer, you know, like my mom, 
My mom probably liked it a little bit more than me because it rung a little bit truer to her because she was alive, um, you know, uh, right after all that had happened and when the Cold War really picked up. And, it, you know, it does, the movie does lead into the Cold War and how that all started. Um, so, overall, not disappointed I saw it. Disappointed I spent as much as I did to go see it in the theater. But to, but I would have ended up spending almost as much to rent it at home. But I wouldn't have spent as much on popcorn and stuff. So uh, I could have just gotten an Uber Eats and had a nice meal while I watched it uh, on my comfy couch uh, and, and with my dog on my lap and not worrying about if my dog's at home uh, missing me. So uh, I to totally would not... I'm not going to say don't go see it. I am going to say uh, wait till it comes out and then definitely see it because it is worth seeing. Uh, if you, especially if you like history, because it is filled with references to history and one pretty cool one at the end. Um, Emily Blunt's character was, uh, she's great. She did a really, I'll give her credit. She did a fantastic job. She's likable and hateable at the same time. Um, oh, the funny part in Oppenheimer, and I forgot to tell you, I took my, my mom and I went and, uh, my son Shay who's pretty intelligent and knows history and understands what the, what the movie was about, wanted to go see it. And it's rated R. And I just went, I don't care if it's rated R. I've seen plenty of rated R movies before. The only rated R movies he can't see are rated R movies with, with nudity. And I thought to myself, Christopher Nolan's not going to put nudity in a movie with Oppenheimer. Why would he do that? What's the purpose of doing that? Well, uh, Shay got to see some boobies today. Uh, you got to see some simulated sex today, so that was a little uh, that was a little awkward. And poor this poor kid, uh, he is not um, he he's he's not really into girls yet. You know, he's not into that at all. He was like, "Oh my god, this is," uh, and he like covered his eyes, and he was so like annoyed about it. Like I, as a little kid, would have been like, "Oh, this is so awesome." You know, but he was just straight up, he pulled his shirt up over his eyes and he was like, oh, why do they have to do this in movies? He was so disgusted by it. And I'm kind of like that with sex scenes in movies now too. I could, I could do without sex scenes in movies. I really don't care about, care for them. I find them very boring. I could watch porn for that. Um, I didn't need to see Florence Pugh's boobs uh, in this movie. Not that they were, I mean, they were small. Not, not the worst boobs I've ever seen by any means. Not the best either, but... She's pretty cute, uh, so it was nice to see her uh, pretty much naked. Uh, I'm not sure how I felt about my kids seeing it, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, I was not expecting that. I thought it was all because of the subject matter and the swearing and it's about bombs, and I was expecting they were going to show people melted from uh, an atomic bomb, that kind of stuff, and they didn't. Uh, instead, it was the boobs that made it rated R. So uh, he was... Um, <laughs> he was going crazy, um, uh, really annoyed with it, really annoyed with it. And I was squirming in my seat because I felt really uncomfortable, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I felt like a bad dad. Then I thought to myself, I was like, ah, it's just a little bit of sex. What are you going to do? Sex is sex. What are you going to do? Uh, it's not, not like he hasn't seen boobs before, I'm sure, and it won't be uh, the last time he sees them for sure. Um, how many cannabis leaves do I give it? Um, how many bong rips, canvas tokes, bong rips? Uh, how many? I would, I would, I'm a, I'm a blunt guy. So uh, how many blunts to the dome? Let's do blunts to the dome. How many blunts to the dome do you need for Oppenheimer? Uh, I was uh, three deep. So I would argue you're going to need at least six. It's a six, it's a six blunt to the dome uh, to enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, I'll rate it. But the rating for it, um, well, cannabis leaves have five cannabis leaves, right? Is it five on a cannabis leaf? I never can t remember because they all cannabis leaf. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven leaves on a cannabis. Okay, so out of seven. Um, all right, let's do a rating here. All right, out of seven, I'll give it four and a half. Four and a half. I'm going to give it four and a half out of seven, four and a half cannabis leaves out of seven. Um, and I like that idea of Pat Wu. I'll steal that for the future for other um, movie ratings. Uh, so there you go. Four and a half out of seven. Uh